this team's done. I have one thing to say to those non-believers. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. I think our championship team is probably one of the most underrated. People don't know basketball, say, because Michael Jordan wasn't playing. Somebody had to win. I know he's Being a champion just doesn't happen. You've got to go through a war. Oh, look at all those guys have a long history. We had a fiery group of guys, but uh, we knew how to harness that fire. My job will be to try to get us back in the playoffs, and it's going to take work. Rudy was the greatest coach for that team. You know, we had a lot of different personalities on the team, and he handled them. He had a chip, that same chip that we all had. There wasn't a specific person I was trying to prove myself to. It was everybody. One of the greatest competitors I've ever been with. Dream did anything it take for this organization to win. Give me the ball. Do you want to win, Maxi? <laughs> He had a temper early in his career. When somebody tried to now intimidate you, now we're back down. He always was a great player, but he became a phenomenal player, you know, after he became Muslim. Ains puts up a three, yes, and the game is tied. Unbelievable. They call us Choke City. Basically jumping bandwagon, jumping off the ship because they thought it was sinking. That woke us up. Kelly out of the corner for three hits with seven points. From that moment on, I think that we just started believing in ourselves. We wanted to win this thing for the city. The headlines were clutch city. They are on their feet here at the summit. Nobody gave us a chance this year. Before we made the trade, they said we were wrong for, for not doing anything. When we made the trade, they said we were wrong for breaking up the combination. Like, who is this dude? He ain't special. We're special. If we don't win it this year, they're going to blame it on me. And then... proved us that he was special. It was a lot of tension in the organization during that time. I, mean, I felt disrespected. I just wanted out. My feelings were hurt. They ended up getting a little ugly at the end, man. But we stuck in there. We hung in there. We persevered. And we pushed on. We have a good story. You know, we did something that's very special. If you go back and look at the team and look at what we had and what we did, is an amazing run. We came from insurmountable odds. You know, life is good. Two years, two rings. You don't get no better than this. A team of destiny, a team that can go out and kick your butt. We were the definition of clutch. It's funny. If you put in your navigation, it actually comes up as Clutch City. Clutch City, June 8th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on NBA TV. Our next guest lived it. We want to welcome in via Skype the Junkyard Dog. Super Mario, Mario Ellie is with us. Mario, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? So good to have you. We're doing great. So uh, the back-to-back -back championships, 94-95. What did you do, I have to ask you, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Kiss of Death, the shot that rallied the Rockets down 3-1 to the Suns? Well, uh, they had a little uh, 20th anniversary of the back-to-back uh, -back championship team. It was great seeing the guys, seeing Vernon, Seeing Tim Bro, seeing Charles Jones, Pete Chilcutt, of course, Elijah Juan and Drex. It was just good seeing the old teammate and coaching staff. And, and Rio, when you get together with your old teammates like that, you're bringing in a guy like Clyde Drexler for the second one. How tough was that to bring in an all-star like him, Hall of Famer, and fit him into the mix? It's a great question, D, because, you know, we won the championship with Otis, so we're real loyal to Otis. We're real tight. We won a tough a seven-game series against the Knicks, and Otis had a lot to do with it. Uh, we felt one of our guys were getting, you know, traded, and we didn't know what Clyde's mentality was coming to the team. But once Clyde came on the team, D, he went to work. Uh, I, I remember Elijah Juan being hurt. We went up to play the Clippers, and I think he had 46. And uh, he was a man on a mission. And uh, getting reunited with his five slamming jamming teammate, Dream, that really lift his spirits. Mario, Steve Smith, playing against, you know, the Houston teams, those back-to-back, -back, we obviously know Dream, a Hall of Famer, but I would say is playing you guys, it came down to, say, a last shot. It was like six or seven guys on your team wasn't afraid to take the shot and also wanted a shot. Can you talk about that mentality, having so many guys not afraid of the big moment? That's what made our team special, Steve. It started in practice, us really competing, and me and myself, Sam, coming off the bench, you know, your, uh, your competitive spirit 
you want guys in front of you to mess up. You sure you can get in the game. That's the chance we had. Me and Sam was like, I hope Kitty fall down and get hurt. I hope Vernon turn his ankle. Because we were so competitive, we wanted to get out on the floor. Because we knew with Rudy's system, if you were out there performing, he would not put back the starters. He'll let the guys out there just play it out. What the Rockets did in the Clippers in game five. That's what made Rudy special. When the guys were rolling good, he just stuck with them. Mario, I want to go to the 1995 playoffs. Uh, you're a six seed. You beat four 50-win teams to take the title. So each year is different. Where does that one rank with you? That's uh, one of the tops because we're a six seed. We played four of the best teams in the league. You know, our last hurdle was, of course, Dennis and that great Orlando team. I mean, you got Nick Anderson, you got 3D, you got Penny, you got Shaq, you got Craig, you got Brian Shaw. That's a young squad right there. I thought they did a fantastic job in the East. And, uh, you know, that Phoenix team with Barkley, you know, of course, Stockton and Malone in Utah. And, of course, that year, it was a bad year for them to give out the MVP in front of number 34 because he went out there on a mission and showed everybody why he was the best player in the league at that time. And, Rio, when you go back to those days, who is that one or two teammates you say, you know what, I miss that guy because there are certain days I might not have had it, but once I saw that guy in the locker room, he brought my spirit up and got me ready to play. Who are those two teammates for you? Um, my first year was Vernon, uh, Vernon Maxwell, just the energy he played with, all the big shots. And I thought the second year, Chucky Brown, a journeyman that really nobody gave no respect to, just came to work every day, having to battle Carl Malone, having to battle Charles Buckley, having to battle Dennis Rodman in that tough West Coast. And this guy didn't really get the credit he deserves. All, only people remember by Chucky is him being on maybe 10 or 12 <laughs> 13 different NBA teams, but he was a solid contributor to our, our second championship team, and he doesn't get enough credit. Mario Eli, thanks for joining us. We look forward to Clutch City, June 8th at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Always good to reminisce with you. Take care. Hey, good talking to you guys. Thank you for having me. I thought you were pretty composed, 3D, during that whole segment, because I know you have mixed emotions about it. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Yes, I do, Vince. <laughs> it's a little edgy about it. <laughs> it is what it is, Vince. What do you want to know now? I, I, again, I'm just, <laughs> just putting it out there, you know. It's, it's um, to be honest with you, yes, it's tough to deal with the more we talk about it, but I'm still happy when I go back to say that I had the opportunity. We won 57 games that year as a team. Shaq's rolling, Penny's rolling. Um, breaking NBA records, shooting the three. So we're feeling good about ourselves. We come out of big game seven at home, beating the Indiana Pacers. So we're feeling like we're the young guns. I got two major horses in Shaq and Penny leading the way. Nick Anderson and I, we bring in Horace Grant. So we're feeling like this is our first of many championship runs to come. And obviously it didn't happen. The biggest thing that we regret, that we double teamed Olajuwon too much. And like Mario Eli said, they had too many shot makers. Mm -hmm. Robert Ory one night, Sam Cassell in game one goes for 30. Of course, Kenny Smith reminds us every time he had work, he hit those big threes in game two, I think in, in the game one. So with so many shot makers and Olajuwon probably being the best player on the planet those two years, nothing we could do with him. Yeah, memories sound pretty fresh. Uh, yeah. For 3D. Yeah. Once, once you he got rolling up, there. Since you opened up that scar, he's <laughs> yeah, got yeah. all this poured out. It's not like you told you the score was like two minutes left. It was yeah. the time. Who was on the floor? <sighs> remember everything. Uh, tell me about those, uh, those Rocket teams. You know, it started off, 3D said it best. You you were so confused on single coverage and dream or double and dream. And then when you double, it was always confusion. Who do you leave open? Who do you close out all the way to? Who do you, you know, sometimes say, hey, let's rotate to him to give him the shot, make him a driver. All those guys can make plays. And like Mario said and Sam, guys coming off the bench felt like they were starters. Yep. And those guys didn't mind taking that shot and being that guy. They had guys who relished being in that moment. Yeah, and, and so much of the uh, NBA Finals coverage includes our NBA TV special. So mm -hmm. really looking forward to this next one uh, among the great pieces of entertainment. I'll be busy on June 8th. Oh, you can't? Yeah, that's right. Don't worry about it. Well, you lived it too.